Happy 4th of July. Okay, here's a 4th of July story. Um, I got quite a bit of stuff done outside and around, and it's good to get out every day, get some sunshine. I love it. Love being outside. Um, even when it's hot, it doesn't bother me much. I just prepare. But, well, yeah, you got to be careful. You got to take care of yourself, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do detox, and I um, am aerobic, aerobically active. So, um, anyway, um, here's my 4th of July story. After 10 years of um, putting money into my place and making sure the bills were paid and all that stuff, um, living with Doug, I decided to marry him. And, um, oh... I figured I'm um, like 10 years or something and enough was enough. I mean, if somebody's so different, so I'm estranged with a letter of divorcement, um, being married on the 4th of July in 2000. So, um, but here for almost 30 years. So, um, yeah, decided to raise my kids and had our own rooms and do things right and not have any more children and be responsible, that type of thing. So that's what we did. So, um, I don't settle for what I, less than what I expect in life as far as integrity is go goes. How people treat people is a big thing for me. Um, the 4th of July was the first time in 2000 that I met my birth mother. Um, although my grandmother came up from Texas to meet me with an older sister, half-sister. And um, uh, well, that was different. Literally um, uh, satanic, which um, not my grandmother, my mother and my older sister and so, um, that was pretty much a nightmare the day of my wedding, but that's another story. Um, neither here nor there. Um, I always know I'm okay. That's why I got married on Independence Day, because the preacher didn't even get it. He picked out the wrong passages, and even though we met with him beforehand and all that stuff, a Lutheran minister, pastor, so, um... I got married in my yard by a tree that I call my Trinity trees. Um, I've got a few of them. I planted three together in different groups for different symbol symbolizations of people I love and whatever. So um, uh, we got married in the yard. It was 104 degrees that day, 4th of July. Um, uh I gave my mom a ride, and uh, we had a 1948 Anglia. I gave her a ride in my hot rod, um, in my wedding dress. Just thought I'd, um, like, freak her out because she is an old hippie, and, um, um, she deserved it. <laughs> and it's very light, uh, fiberglass front end and, uh, hinged, you know, and all that stuff. So, 350 board over motor, and, you know. It was fun. Light, little, short wheelbase car. Like the old gassers, you know, that type of thing. So, yeah, that was fun. That was a good wedding present. I couldn't kill her for leaving me alone, <laughs> but I scared her, you know. Mm. And there was more to that after I got to know her a little more, too. She actually did deserve it as a person. So, Oh, you know what? Robin's Hood's cut off all his comments because he doesn't want his other subscribers um, uh, being badgered or anything. And he had a good idea that if you have something to say about him to make a video with your grievance, and he'll answer you that way. Well, you know what? And he said people that hide behind, you know, no picture. Well, a lot of my friends got pictures, and most of our my friends make videos and we do comment to each other and robin's like yeah so if you don't make a 
video don't bother commenting. <laughs> it's like, yeah, all the YouTubers are getting together and just talking because um, we're on here showing our face. We're pouring out our hearts. And if we do have God in our heart, we're talking to each other like that. And we're not leaving nasty comments, you know. We're actually being friendly to each other. Yeah. So, and he doesn't get any money for what he does, you know. And he could. He's got his one Walmart video could make money off that, but he doesn't. So, anyway, nobody's perfect. So, if you got a grievance with him, and I appreciate um, being able to listen to scripture when he does go in that direction about revelations the end times and he speaks it speaks my language um through that scripture with that you got a grievance with that i don't care that's what i listen for and i also seen tears in his eyes that were real so i don't care whatever else you want to say um everybody grows hopefully hopefully people do you know but I'm just telling you, you got something to say about somebody I care about. Um, say it to them and say it in a video. You have something to say about me? Say it in a video. I'll answer you on your page. You know? Because I'm here actually, okay, like my integrity with getting married on the 4th of July. The pastor was supposed to... Um, talk about how it is to be independent from the world as one united under God. Guy screwed that up royally. But whatever. I won't even tell you the direction he went in that. He's uh, brain dead. But, oh, anyway. So, and I figured that anyway. You know, but uh, then I, uh, well, I'm independent. So that's why I did pick that day because, um, God always told me, never listen to anybody but me. And that's exactly what I do. And it doesn't matter where it's led me or what I have to do. When he tells me to do something, that's just what I do. If he told me to get up and walk out of here right now, leave all your vehicles, leave your animals, call animal um, people around and have them come and get there, whatever he told me to do, I would do that. That's a fact. So, whatever God tells me to do, I do. So, yeah, that's a fact. Always have. Well, okay, when I was younger, like little girl, he'd tell me to do something and I'd be like, you know, I'm not so sure about that, you know. Not even a teenager. When he talked, he told me what to do and no matter how odd it seemed to me, I would do it. You know, like getting confirmed, I had no idea, and it was my choice. I had no idea why he led me in that direction, because it wasn't mandatory. And that's becoming a member of that church, but um, so I did. And then I started getting all the this information piled on me, and adults, um, like I was locked in my pastor's uh, library for a long time, and I was reading these three books, these or oracles of every religion known to man on the planet. Plus, so and there was this one big white one, and these three white leather bound gold le letters, um, lambskin, the symbolization of it all, right? So he locked me in there. It was a glass door. And I could communicate with him. Um, and it was skeleton key because he didn't want anybody else knowing that I was in there studying. I wanted to know every religion. And I went into synagogues and um, every, every place, every church. And um, communicated with everybody before I made my decision becoming a, a member of the Redeemer Lutheran Church. So when I did move out in the country, I didn't get another church per se. It's not like I didn't go. It's just that I didn't have one of my own, my childhood church. So, but the reason now I know led, 
God started me out in the Blue Lodge and then in that um, library at the church was, well, actually locked too, so nobody could, get, yeah, I did say that. So, um, and he came and checked on me, but was to be able to learn how to um, start getting on here 20 years ago. I did, well, actually it was 1995 um, at a technical school. I was online and I was on government pages and um, the CBC and uh, all kinds of things. As a matter of fact, I lived with the first computer, a guy that worked at IBM in Minneapolis, um, the first computer in the house and he actually him and his friend wrote the first game Dungeon and Dragons for Atari way back when, or no, in television. I do believe it was called. And in my school when I was 12, I think it was called the Big Blue Machine, or I can, can't remember now, but I was researching history on the first computer. And my mom worked for Control Data <coughs> at Muncie, where, where she worked also. There was a, a computer data um, room full of the biggest computer I ever saw in my life at that time. And I think that was at 12. So I've been around computers all my life and this isn't um, any kind of a joke. All my research and energy has gone into tracking down the bad people and putting them in check with my mind, communicating with God, and taking a lot of hard knocks so just not doing it no more and i did calm down god helps me he always does he says you know um don't let a fool fool you that's like yeah that's true because he talks to them too if he tells them no don't do that and i know he did then i should rest assured that he did tell them not to write something in that manner um maybe worded a little differently or if you have questions in life or need that kind of um minister or counselor um i've been a counselor but i'm not on here as a counselor i'm on here as a friend i got friends on here that want to hear what i'm saying because they got hurt there's somebody this little girl i love for instance well there's more than one and some guys but there's some people that got hurt and for the people that hurt them like that do you know what i feel like because they're such loving people do you got any idea what i actually feel like about that i don't think you do that's why i'm on here that's why i'm on here singing funny songs because i knew that um seven and bell would love my songs and other people that love me that's why you know appreciate the time that's put in there to say hey this is me and i care and i'm here that type of thing plus i studied to um and oh i want to tell you something being a not only as um a yoga master since i was 15 and totally limber and quick with all my athletics and everything else and running and jumping and everything I do do um, uh, it doesn't go away martial being a martial artist it's um, well not even like writing a book writing a book uh, bike it's like um, actually like you get up in the morning and if somebody woke you out of your sleep you'd be on guard right that second or actually before they even got through the door you know so and I use chainsaw, I swing an axe, I have uh, lifted my own motor out and put my own uh, timing belt and um, uh, coil and starters and done brakes. Um, help put in a tranny, help put in another, well, more than one motor. I've set in windshields, I, I've done body work, I do fiberglass work. Um, so. All I'm saying is before you go judging me or my place or anything I've been through, you better just watch your tongue. This is not the page to come around somebody and mess with them. And I will tell you something. This is very true, too. 
God's watching every move you make, and he's my vengeance. He's everybody's vengeance that is getting treated crappy. And the other ones that love each other, they're feeling the same way too. They're just waiting for the day for their father to say, come on home. Yeah, my poor dog and cat, well, especially the dog, firecrackers and stuff. She's such a scaredy cat, poor baby. So, anyhow, since we don't have our own well, and we pounded it because it's very shallow. I've pounded my own well, too, when I, at my lake home, and when it's shallow water, me and this teenage boy, I was right after my first son. I, like I said, I've always kept physically fit, you know, um, splitting walls, everything, big time. So, um, yeah, oh, I was going to say, um, yeah, she's poor. She's scared to death how all that one. Well, the neighbors got like spud guns and all that stuff too. So it's like, oh, poor dog. She's always um, doing good. Oh, yeah, the martial artist thing. You, you know, it's just always there. So um, you'd be surprised. Especially when you start with judo and then go into like kung fu and um, taekwondo, jujitsu that type of thing you kind of progress in all around the world and learn all the arts um, everything you master every move um, is a, a tool especially when you injure yourself because then you always got these other things you can do which is very interesting and you know what I'm saying about techniques worldwide or whatever people do to you learn you know yeah. Well, especially Taekwondo, you all know about that. Wow. Yeah, there's that one um, kinky arm move thing that you know, rip somebody apart like that. But I like judo. I, you know, take your arm and flip your ass, step on your throat, or break your leg, something like that. Or just like, yeah, breaking your leg, you know, that type of thing. So, for real, it's real. And it doesn't go away. I'd have to be a hundred years old before I was like, uh, couldn't run up my driveway or slap the shit out of somebody. So no matter my wrinkles, can't do nothing about my skin, but my muscles aren't going away. So there you go. That's that. Enjoy your insults. And all you younger guys, hey, people, look forward to it. You know, your face might get wrinkly, but... You take care of yourself and you'll be a badass till God puts you to sleep, takes you home. That's the truth. He told me I had, I never fear anybody. He'll always give me the strength and the angle and the words to combat anybody in any situation. And he always has. So. Plus that, I got a wrist rocket dudes with steelies. Yeah dead eye you know guns are well got a k too but don't think i'll ever need that but uh you know actually was bought for hunting because it's a perfect brush gun and we have um that's what we have on our creek bottom is brush and deer you know and every other animal <laughs> you know so yeah anyway I decided not to really do much for um today. I went out and had a nice day outside for a while, started a fire for Dusty and you know, it was great actually. So yeah, pretty nice. Yep. Let me think of anything else I wanted to say. Well, I hope you all are doing good, and God bless your night. Even the mean people, I pray, it's like, God, you know, come on, just like, don't let them be like that. Give them more understanding. 
ask him to ask for it in. Because you have to ask about other people before you can open your mouth. That's a fact. The same with a, a minister. A good minister will always be be in prayer, no matter who he serves. I guess in the Zionist churches, we all know that Satanistic. So, um, yeah, a good speaker of any sort, communicating with people, will always ask God what to say. And this afternoon, he said, "Tell him what's on your mind, and tell him your heart." He didn't necessarily approve of my swear words, but, you know, such is life. So, well, I'm going to let this go. I'm going to say good night, and um, I just wanted you to know about my integrity and who I am as a woman, and um, that is a very important thing. So, um, <laughs> I love you guys. The ones that care. Ones that don't, you're not lovable. Not to me. Maybe I'm not to you, and that's probably a good thing. So, night, you guys. Night, friends. I'll be back singing. I was um, singing tunes today, but just, uh, I'm not, I don't do well with um, people that don't uh, go back to my first videos and watch them all. I don't care if you like my lack of class or not. I'd rather be out fishing, although I kind of quit fishing, but well, to say I'd rather um, be out on a beach than talk to you anyway. So I'd rather be totally alone. And believe me, I was homeless. I had a, a ex-husband that was a total piece of shit. I was homeless with two kids and um, no home with blankets as a tent and pulled my ass out of a mountain with my children, got a place cleaning cabins and got back on my feet and bought a vehicle. So that's just another story. So enjoy insulting you. But I have my Bible. I didn't have any electric up there, but we packed water up the side of the mountain. But I have my Bible and a campfire and I'd read for my sons and yeah, that part was wonderful, oh, especially after we got the cabin. <laughs> that was pretty good, too. So, yeah. So when I say I'd rather be homeless than talk to somebody that's um, uh, ignorant when I'm speaking or can't see my uh, feminine qualities through my anger, that's just too bad. Then you are shallow. You know, so good night once again, <laughs> people.